If you want talk, games, and fun all rolled into one, well, you've come to the right place. This is The Game Show, where host Bradley Clark and his special guests talk about the world of television game and competition shows. But Bradley's guests aren't here to just talk. They came to play a game as well. What will today's topic be? What game does Bradley have planned? There's only one way to find out. It's time to start the show. You heard the man. Welcome to The Game Show. And here's your host, the Bradster himself, Bradley Clark. Now that is a great intro. Thank you so much, Austin Angelo, and welcome once again to The Game Show, the talk show all about the world of television game and competition shows. I'm Bradley Clark, and so far on The Game Show, I've devoted three episodes to milestones of classic game shows. First, announcer Rich Fields joined me to celebrate the 45th anniversary of The Price is Right. Then game show producer John Ritchie Jr. was my special guest to talk about the 45th anniversary of The Joker's Wild. And last but certainly not least, legendary game show host Wink Martindale made his way onto the airwaves to discuss the 45th anniversary of Gambit. However, the 45-year anniversaries don't stop there because March of 2018 marks the sapphire anniversary of this classic game show. Keep your eye on this spot. You're about to see June Lockhart and her partner in this circle trying to win $10,000 in less than a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the $10,000 Pyramid. Today's special guests are June Lockhart and Rob Reiner. And here is your host, Dick Clark. That's right, on March 26, 1973, the $10,000 Pyramid debuted on CBS at 10.30 a.m. and was the show that moved the new prices right to the 3 p.m. time slot, where it remained until going back to the morning lineup in the fall of 1975. Brad Fact! Pyramid is one of the most successful game shows in television history, winning nine daytime Emmys for Outstanding Game Show and winning one of my idols, Dick Clark, Pyramid's host for 15 years, three daytime Emmys for Outstanding Game Show Host. Over the years, Pyramid has kept up with the times by increasing the top prize all the way up to $100,000 and by inviting big stars of the day onto the show as celebrity players. There have been a number of great celebrity players on Pyramid, but in my opinion, one of the best to ever play the game is this lovely actress. From Television City in Hollywood, this is the $25,000 Pyramid. Today's special guests are Teresa Ganzel. Teresa, your assignment is to win this man $10,000. Mm. You'll do that. Okay. You got it. Okay. I'm moving out. <laughs> okay. Here is your first subject. Go. Um, the wax. Things on the floor. Because you can't afford to call. Uh, because you like to use a pen. Why you write letters? Why you write? Washington's face. Things on a monument. Um. Things in Mount Rushmore. Uh. uh um, Things that are chiseled. The um the uh, ID number. Washington's face. Lincoln's Things on a dollar bill. Um. The keyhole. The Things picture frame. The chain. Things on a locket. Beer. Things with a head. Um, uh, and a mug. A pickle. Things in a jar. Pickles. Um, beer. Things in a barrel. Uh, the pyramid. Alexander. Things that are great. Yes! You just heard Teresa Ganzel climb to the top of the pyramid, winning $10,000 for her partner. Teresa was a frequent guest on the $25,000 pyramid and the $100,000 pyramid throughout the 1980s run of the show. And I'm so happy to say she is my special guest on this episode of The Game Show to talk about the 45th anniversary of Pyramid. Please welcome Teresa Ganzel. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Bradley. I am so excited to have you on the show because I've been watching you play Pyramid because of The Game Show Network since I was eight years old. So this is such a thrill to have you on the show. That's wonderful. Wow, you've been watching since you were eight. That's great. I remember when I was that age, I used to watch Concentration. Sure. Concentration. 
concentration. Now, here's your host, Hugh Dome. Thank you, R. James, and welcome everyone to Concentration, the television game where the ability to concentrate pays off. Let's take a look at our concentration board. You see 30 numbers on this board. Behind each number, there is an object. There are 15 pairs of objects in all. Some are prizes and some are not. But each time a player matches a pair, a section of a puzzle is revealed. Now, this puzzle consists of words and drawings similar to this one. It always adds up to a well-known phrase, the title of something, something you know. In this case, I think you've already guessed, this is a title of a motion picture. It happened one night. Now, the first player to solve this puzzle wins and keeps the prizes credited to him. Yeah, and I used to have the home board game of that. So, yes, I started watching game shows when I was little, too. My dream in life since seven years old is to become a game show host. Oh, well, I'm thinking why not? I hope your dream comes true. I bet it does. As we all know, whatever you love or are enthused about usually does come into your life. So I'm thinking I'm talking to the next great game show host. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Teresa. That truly means a lot. And hopefully one day you'll get to be a celebrity guest on my game show. That's right. I would love it. I'm already signing on, having just met you on the phone. I'm there. Perfect. So I can't wait to talk to you about Pyramid because since I've been watching for so long, I wish I was around as an adult in the 80s so I got to play with you because you always gave the perfect clues. You were one of the best players Pyramid's ever seen. And I couldn't think of anyone better to have to talk about the 45th anniversary of this show. Well, I really sincerely loved doing it, and I really, truly think that it was the greatest game, because back in the 80s, I did do some other game shows, Hollywood Squares, Password, I don't know, Double Talk, Family Feud, I can't remember them all, but a bunch of shows, and they were all fun and all like that, but Pyramid, to me, is the finest crafted game. It's an actually great game. So I really loved doing it. And I remember when I would be told I was going to be doing it, I almost felt like I was going into training, like, okay, get good sleep, make sure you know you don't get a cold. I would take care of my health. I really cared about doing a good job on that show because it was just such a fun game. In fact, I was thinking about that right before you called because I am right now just fighting a little bit of a cold. And I remember back doing the show because, of course, in reality, you were shooting all five days of a week in one day. Right. And if you were off your mark, if you were having a cold or something, it looked like you were off your game for all five days, when in reality, it was just one day. So like, all those things were really important, because it's serious. You're really trying to win somebody money, you know? Right. And I hope you're on your game today, because later on, oh yes, we're going to play the game of the day. And we're going to play Pyramid's famous winner circle right here on the game show. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. I hope I do a good job, but it's funny because I am aware of the fact that one of the reasons I think I was so good at playing the pyramid is because I was so young. <laughs> In other words, when I look, I go, well, I think one of the reasons I was one of the better players is because I was one of the youngest players. Because sometimes I get together with some of the current producers of the pyramid show now, and we sometimes just play the game. And I'm still okay, but believe me, I am not as good as I was back in the 80s. Being young helps. It does give you a leg up. Well, you're still young to me, and I know you still got it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, good. <laughs> and I'll be giving the clues later, and I consider myself a young individual, so hopefully that'll play into effect as well. Okay, yes, yes. So let's talk about Pyramid. You said it was one of the finest, if not the finest, crafted game show around. Why do you think still 45 years later... The game is still such a fan favorite. One of the reasons is it's simple. You can play it in a living room. It's not relying on special effects and it's not physical. I mean, it really is a word association game. I mean, even if you look at something as basic as Wheel of Fortune, you know, it's Hangman. It's a simple game. And I do think that something that's not complex stands the test of time. And also, it's interesting, like without trying to be funny, you laugh a lot when you play Pyramid. You know, like on Hollywood Squares, you're trying to be funny. But in Pyramid, when you're moving that fast in a word association game, the humor is there always. And so that's why it's fun also, because it's a fast-moving game. And I think we're very fast-moving now more than ever. And so I think the tempo of Pyramid really stands the test of time, because it's fast. 
Well, I think to your point of it being fast moving and you were able to incorporate humor without losing the track of the game was because of Dick Clark, the host of the show for many years and an idol of mine. You know, his hosting style was always game forward. But he'd always make sure to put his wit, his charm, and let the celebrities also put in their humor as well, but still staying focused on the game. You hit the nail on the head. That's a real delicate balance where you want to have humor, you want to be playful, but you have to stay on point with the game. And you are so right. Dick Clark really hit that happy medium. He really was superb at that. What was Dick like on the set? He was so classy and charming, and really, what you saw is what you got. In other words, it wasn't like, oh, I saw another side of Dick. No, he was classy and upbeat and professional and courteous and kind and classy. He was great. And also, his sense of humor was not just for the cameras. He was a witty, clever guy, even when the cameras weren't rolling. He was really delightful, yeah. I always say that I've always had a born connection to game shows in many ways, but this is one of them. Dick Clark had a brother, actually, named Bradley Clark. He actually passed away during the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. But it's just so funny how we have that connection. Wow, that's great. Listen, I believe in all that stuff. I think there's something to it all. And getting to know over the years some of the people that work on game shows, not necessarily even the host, But whether they are the game show writers or they're the game show producers, the people that work at the game show network now, all like that, their stories are similar to what you're telling me right now, that there is a passion, there's a connection, there's a this, there's a that. People that end up in that world really want to be there. And in fact, there's a junior high school close to me that teaches, believe it or not, a game show class, a math teacher who loves game shows, who moved here from, I think it's Indiana, wanted to get in the game show world, whatever. He became a school teacher, but he was able to convince a really great private school that they should have a game show class, and it's part of the curriculum, and it's just wonderful. And they've had me come several times to play Pyramid with the kids. And all this to say is that when you love game shows, you find a way to make it part of your life in whatever form it's going to take. And it's great. Also, it's really neat to see junior high school students loving game shows. And they learn about all the old shows and current shows and all like that. It's really pretty wonderful. You also realize that a lot of game shows really are educational. And I wish I would see what they created. But then they are also given an assignment to create their own game shows. That's great. Which I think is really fabulous. The teachers have told me that sometimes the games that they create, what they come up with are pretty clever. And I also think that it really helps with communication because we do communicate more on text messaging and emails and everything rather than face-to-face. And so I do think the pyramid does help with old-fashioned face-to-face communication. I agree. And it's great that the kids of today who are so into screens are getting that communication. You know, Pyramid is all about communication of words. There's no emojis in Pyramid. Yeah. Although, you never know one day, who knows, Emoji Pyramid, that could be the next game show. (laughs) (laughs) So when you played Pyramid, you are essentially helping these contestants win thousands and thousands of dollars. Was it nerve-wracking, especially being in the winner circle with the lights and the clock ticking and, and making sure that you don't get that dreaded buzzer? Yes, it really was nerve-making. But I think what happens is only because when you're an actor, you're used to being in front of the cameras and with an audience and all like this. So you are more relaxed than your contestant that you're helping out. And what happens is your focus is no longer on yourself. You're seeing that the contestant is having nerves. And so you are saying to them, you're going to be great. You're going to be good. Don't worry. We got this. And so you are calming them down. So yes, I would be nervous, believe me. But at the same time, I think what helps is that your focus is on your partner and you're trying to make sure that they're not nervous. So it really helps. And Dick Clark would always give the contestants a small back rub and let you and the contestant take five seconds of silence before the first subject of the pyramid was revealed. So I'm taking that helped calm down the nerves as well. 
Yes, and I remember he was so good at that. He really was. I remember the first time they called me to do the $100,000 show, I said, I don't want to do it. I would be too afraid. I don't want to mess up and mess up somebody's chance for 100000 And they convinced me otherwise, and I'm so glad I did it. But yes. This is a responsibility. So, yeah, the nerves are there. There is no way out of it. I think if you're not caring enough about the contestants winning, you probably shouldn't be doing the game. You should have fun, but you should take it seriously. Occasionally, it happens very rarely. But sometimes you do watch a show and you go, eh, that celebrity, they're making it too much about themselves. You really do need to make it about the contestant. And as you said, Dick Clark was great at that. I agree because, as you were saying, you know, you wanted to be at your best because it's not only the contestant playing, it's really you playing. You're the celebrity partner, but you're half of the game. Yes, yes. That sometimes it was funny, too, is because currently I'll be out and about. This happened six weeks ago. I was at a play, and when the show was over, a man came up to me who said, you don't remember me, but you helped win me all this money on the Pyramid Show, and because of that, I was able to pay off my school debts for law school, and I'm currently a lawyer in Century City. This has happened to me several times where I'll be out and about, and people from way back then come up to me and tell me how, whether it was winning 10000 25000 or 100000 really helped their life. It really got them to college or it paid off their loans or it did this, that, or the other thing. And it really does feel pretty good that you actually did something to help someone's life. Absolutely. Now, we actually have a mutual friend. His name is John Ritchie Jr. He's a producer on the new $100,000 Pyramid. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. So I told him you were going to be on the game show, and he said to ask you about a time you ran into a Pyramid contestant at a restaurant. Oh, yeah. That was one time. It was just funny because it was was like so over the top. I was leaving a Chinese restaurant and this guy like ran up and it was just like the whole restaurant stopped because he was like, you changed my life. And I'm like, what? Everybody in the restaurant looked up and then he went on and told me all about how because I had won him this money that all these great changes had happened in his life. It was pretty adorable and wonderful. Oh, and then the other people in the restaurant after he like said this, this and the other people broke up and applause. It was fabulous. <laughs> that must make you feel good that all these years later, there's still yes. these great stories from Pyramid in the 80s. Yes. Speaking of the whole thing years later and the 80s, I don't know for a fact that this is going to happen. But just the other day, I got contacted from the TV series, This Is Us. Sure. Yeah. They asked me if I would sign a release so that The next episode that comes back after the Olympics, it's not a guarantee, but they are considering using where the family on This Is Us during a segment in the 80s, they're watching television and on the TV would be a clip from me playing Pyramid. Get out of here, really? Yeah, so I signed the release. There's not a guarantee, but if they use the scene and it's edited the way they think it's going to be edited then I will be on the TV screen on This Is Us playing an episode from the 80s of Pyramid. So that would be kind of fabulous, right? That is so cool. I always love when they put game show clips within a movie. The one that automatically comes to mind is is in the movie Groundhog Day when Bill Murray's character Phil Connors is watching Jeopardy. So he's watching the show with this group of people. And since he's reliving the same day over and over again, He knows every single correct response. So when he gives the correct question over and over again, everyone watching the episode with him are so impressed with his knowledge because technically they're watching this episode of Jeopardy for the first time. This country's largest lake, Chapala, is located near the city of Guadalajara. What is Mexico? Leslie. What is Mexico? Correct. Lakes and rivers 400. Seneca is the largest of these lakes in west central New York. What are the Finger Lakes? Jim. What are the Finger Lakes? Correct. Lakes and rivers for 600. Yeah. This South American lake drains into the smaller lake. What is Titicaca? In Bolivia. Jim. What is Titicaca? Correct. Lakes and rivers for 1,000. Milky colored from what glacial clay when entering Lake Geneva, this river is clear blue upon exiting. Jim. What is the Rhone? The Rhone. Good for $1,000. You are $500 off the lead right now. Let's go to Inventors for 200. Yes. It's funny you mention that, but I watch Jeopardy almost every day. And I take a hike almost every day where I pass Alex Trebek's house. 
So that's my trivia of the day. Does the smartness <laughs> just come through his house and just hits you when you're on your hike? <laughs> yes, exactly. It just radiates knowledge. But remember, when you walk past Alex Trebek's house and you're either talking with someone or talking on the phone, there's a rule that you always must phrase whatever you're talking about in the form of a question. I hope you know that. <laughs> you're going to be a great game show host. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I know the tricks of the trade. <laughs> <laughs> So you were talking about being somewhat afraid of appearing as a celebrity guest on the $100,000 pyramid, which was the highest dollar amount the 80s version of the show increased to, but you actually were a part of a $100,000 winning moment. Do you remember that? Here is your first subject. Go! His clay. Things a sculptor uses. The mountains, trails, things you hike on. Thank you. Your dull shoes. Things you polish. A new play. Things that premiere. A new series. Things that things that open. Things that a things that are previewed. Um, things that are um, rehearsed. A a a a critics play. Things that are reviewed. Things. A running brook. Things that trickle, things that are a a things that babble, a thermos, things that keep things cold, things that insulate. Yeah, sort of like I just remember jumping up and down and screaming and truly being excited. I don't remember the details of it, but just remembering it really felt good. Well, I'm sure it did. And bouncing off of that, out of all the celebrities to ever play the game. How does it feel to be one of only a few that has won a contestant $100,000? Because back in the 80s, $100,000, that's a huge sum of money. Yes, exactly. It really does feel good. I have to say that it's a great feeling, and I'm so glad that I did that. And it really is exhilarating. It really is wonderful. And just any time you reach the top of the pyramid, that must have been so exciting because I watch these shows and sometimes the celebrities are just as or even more excited than the contestants. Yes, because the clock is ticking. You mentioned Billy Crystal. What about his quickest time up the pyramid ever? Oh my God, how exciting was that, right? 24 seconds was all he needed. Uh, Push-ups. Exercises. To be or not to be? Uh, Shakespeare, Hamlet. Patton. Uh, Generals, Georgia. Eight. Numbers, figures. Um, uh, monkeys. Uh, things in a barrel. Old flowers. Wilted things. Amazing, amazing. But that's why it's so much fun. I mean, it's just a great game. It's just so well crafted. And I think another element to a finely crafted game show is one that could easily be played by the viewers at home and can create excitement even when you're not playing for money, but rather just playing with your friends and family. I mean, I've been playing many game shows at home for years because I've had the board game versions and the DVD versions, and I create my own versions of the game shows. And I get so excited just by playing these games in my living room. And that's one of the reasons why I think game shows will always stand the test of television time, because they're just so exciting not only to watch, but to play at home as well. Now I need to ask you a question. You said DVD versions of games. I've never gotten one of those. What would be a game that they have on DVD? And is it very interactive or is it not? Yeah, they're actually very interactive. Most of the game show DVD games came out in the mid-2000s. And I actually have a $100,000 Pyramid DVD game that I play with my mom and dad all the time. I have, let's see, Let's Make a Deal, Pressure Luck, Deal or No Deal. It's so silly, but I used to love watching Press Your Luck. Today, Welcome to Press Your Luck. We're going to have a lot of fun today in Big Bucks. Press Your Luck's one of I, my all-time favorites. I loved it 
so much. I was so sad when that went away. I used to love it. I was going to ask you, was there any game shows that either as a celebrity contestant or just a regular contestant you'd want to play? Is Press Your Luck one of them? Yeah, I loved Press Your Luck so much. And though these aren't real game shows, I was a contestant on The Dating Game. From Hollywood, the dating capital of the world, it's The Dating Game. Thank you, and welcome to the dating game. And I was a contestant on the Dollar Ninety Eight Beauty Pageant with Rip Taylor. Yes, it's the Dollar Ninety Eight Beauty Show, an entertainment spectacular if ever there was one, where beauty is not only in the eyes of the beholder but also on this very stage. Tonight, the Dollar Ninety Eight Beauty Show will continue its relentless spoof of all of those other so-called beauty contests. And although this is not a real contest, we will bring you our version of the all-American beauty. That one-of-a-kind girl who not only has personality and poise, but beauty and talent as well. Yes, sir, the Dollar 98 Beauty Show will be bringing you tons of talented and beautiful women every single week. Happy women, terrified women, women singing and dancing and parading about in the latest bathing suits. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of San Tropez. And now, here's the host and star of the show, Mr. Beauty himself. Yes, indeed. So that was before I ever did a game show as a celebrity. I was a contestant on those two game shows. Yep. Did you get picked on the dating game? I was the picker. So I got to go on a dream date. There were three guys and me and I chose my guy. And then we went to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And I have to say, it was a really nice trip. They put me up in a beautiful place. And everything about the trip was absolutely lovely. A lot of celebrities got their start, or at least were on the dating game. Arnold Schwarzenegger was on, Adam West was on. Yeah, you know, it wasn't really necessarily like getting your start, but what I think it was is that a lot of actors would do those shows because they paid the union scale. So it was like, well, heck, I want to do the show because whatever, I forget what union scale was back then, but let's say for showing up to do it, if you got 600 bucks or whatever that was back then, hey, that helped pay the rent. Do you know what I'm saying? So you wanted to get on those shows to get your day rate as a union actor. So that's why I did it. And then also you could go maybe on a trip or win something else. Was going on the dating game or the Dollar Nanny at Beauty Show, was that what maybe sparked your interest in eventually when you did become an actress, you'd mm-hmm. want to do well, game no, shows? Well, actually, I have to say I was already being an actress. I mean, that's why I had my union, you know, sad oh, after a card because I was already starting to do some acting and everything. So I knew as a young actor, even like, you know, when I was going to college and everything, and I remember thinking, oh, boy, I really hope I could make my living as an actor someday. And then, boy, I'd really love to be on game shows. Like, in other words, that already was really part of what I wanted to do. I think some actors would go, no, I'm going to do Shakespeare. That would not be in their consciousness that they wanted to get on game shows. But I have to tell you, it really was. I mean, when I was like 18 years old, I'm thinking, oh my God, and then maybe if I did this and this, and then maybe someday I could get on a game show. So it was always a love of mine, just like what you're saying. It's always been a love of yours. Same thing with me. So what was your reaction when you got your first call to be a celebrity guest on Pyramid? Oh, I was really, really excited, and I respect that they did this. I forget all the details, but you got this phone call where it was more of a social thing. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Yes, why don't you come over? And they actually had you first come over to Bob Stewart's home and play the game. See how you like it. They made it all soft and cuddly and nice to sort of like really pre-test you. But I mean, I kind of knew that. I mean, they're not doing that unless they're thinking of having you on the show. So I really wanted to do a good job when we were having this casual night of playing games. But I was good at it. And so I was so thrilled to do it. But boy, I really wanted to do a good job because, like I said, I loved game shows. One of the reasons why I love doing the game show and talking to people like you is to learn as much new material as I can about the game show industry. I had no idea that celebrities were going to Bob Stewart's house to test out the game. Yeah, they really did. That was, you know, I'm sure very sort of old school. But that also shows that that caring came from the top. What I mean is Bob Stewart cared about 
his contestants' experience, so he didn't want to put people in there to play that weren't naturally talented at it. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, that's a spectacular producer. I agree. You know, one of the pet peeves I have with some of the game shows of today that feature celebrity guests is we mentioned this before. Sometimes it's more about getting their laughs out there and not necessarily about the game. But to know that Bob Stewart, the head honcho of Pyramid and of a game show dynasty, wanted the best of the best for his contestants on the show and to make the game look good as well is fabulous. Yes, you said it. Yep. So after the first time you taped a week of Pyramid shows, after seeing the set and being with Dick Clark and feeling the excitement, were you hooked? And after the five episodes, you said to yourself, I want to come back and play again? Yes. Yes, I was in. I was in right away. I was like, wow, this is great. It was classy. No, there was nothing disappointing. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, but I found out this or actually he's creepy or she's this or no, it was a positive, wonderful, well-run experience. Like everything about it was a lovely experience. Your dressing room had a fruit basket. (laughs) Like everything about it was charming and classy and it was great. Forget the money, forget the publicity. You wanted that fruit basket. I wanted the fruit basket, doll (laughs) darn it. (laughs) The perks of being on Pyramid, you got a fruit basket. (laughs) They should have just called it the food pyramid. See what I did there? (laughs) That's right. That's it, the food pyramid. There you go. You're going to be a great game show host. Well, you saying that truly means a lot, Teresa. Thank you again, but... You know, throughout the years, I've learned from the best via the television, you know, from Dick Clark. I've had Wink Martindale on the show. Oh, Uh, yeah. And I know Wink Martindale a little bit, too. I met him a couple years ago. He's a terrific guy. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a young individual who wants to get into this business, just to watch them and to see the wit and the quickness that they have with the contestants. You know, Monty Hall would always say when he was on Let's Make a Deal, game show hosting looks easy, but you're always doing a million things at one time. You have to interact with the contestant and the home audience and the studio audience. Audience and still keep your eye on the game and what the actual game is. So game show hosting looks easy, but there's so much that goes into it. Oh, most definitely. Sometimes it'll be a classic game show and they'll then have a new host and it doesn't always work. You find out that the game isn't making the host. The host really, you know, standing on his own. I mean, it's not a slam dunk just because a host has been given a good game because sometimes when they switch hosts, it just doesn't work. Do you know who I think is a brilliant host? Tom Bergeron. Wow. Yes. When I watch him, he hits it so perfectly where he's so quick-witted, he's so funny, but he takes care of everyone, whether it's whatever show he's doing. But let's say it's Dancing with the Stars. You go, oh, my God, he makes everyone feel good. He keeps everything on track. He keeps the game going, and he does it with such brilliant wit. I'm all really impressed with him. And, of course, I first got introduced to him, not on Dancing with the Stars or America's Funniest Home Videos, but when he hosted Hollywood Squares. Hollywood in New York. This week, Kathy Lee Gifford debuts Meredith Vieira. Today's Al Roker, Richard Belzer, the Sopranos Tony Zarico and Vincent Pastor. From Late Night with Conan O'Brien, Max Weinberg. From Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, Caroline Ray, Gilbert Gottfried. And starring Whoopi Goldberg with Tom Berger on your host as New York welcomes Hollywood Squares. <laughs> show this is the first time we've taken the show on the road and there's nothing quite like the response you get from new york city yeah he was so great at hollywood squares he's just a brilliant host and speaking of hollywood squares i have a little tie-in you were the dice girl on the pilot episode of a game show called yahtzee based on the board game (laughs) with peter marshall who was the original host hollywood squares burt reynolds Hope Lang, Carl Reiner, Suzanne Pichette, Wally Cox, Rosemary, Vincent Price, Tom DeLuise, or Paul Lynn, all in the Hollywood Square. And here is a master of the Hollywood Square, Peter Martin. Thank you, Kenny. A very good evening, and welcome to the Hollywood Squares. Hello, stars. Hi, Hi, Peter. Peter. 
Right. Who is a better host than Peter Marshall? No one. He's brilliant. Well, what happened? It's so funny you would bring that up. Okay, so they're doing this pilot for Yahtzee. And me being the dice girl, this makes me laugh to think about it. I thought, because before we actually shot the pilot, when we were doing run-throughs, you know, in an office room, I was camping it up. I was sort of doing a comedic take on Vanna White. I was doing kind of a spoof of it. And I was loving sort of being comedic about it all. But then when we really went to shoot the pilot, the producer said, you can't do that anymore. This is serious. Once again, it's about the contestants. So suddenly I had to be a very sincere dice girl. But the dice girl didn't have much to do. So but basically, people would roll these giant dice. They were big clown prop oversized dice. And really, all I had to do was say what it rolled out to be, which was obvious to the cameras and the audience. So somebody would roll and I'd go, ooh, a six. I mean, you realize that a wife's job was much more complicated. There's many more letters in the alphabet and a lot of turning to do. I really had nothing to do except to go, seven. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And I tried to do it as sincerely and seriously as I could, but to just go, nine. <laughs> You know, it's interesting that you bring up Vanna White because when she became the new letter turner on Wheel of Fortune in 1982, she redefined the role of a female on a game show because she was more than just a typical game show model who waves her hand at a car or wears some jewelry. She would actually be introduced as either a hostess or a co-host, and she took America by storm. So for someone like you in the model and co-host role for the game show Yahtzee, was it tough trying to be your own and not trying to be compared to Vanna White? Yeah, I mean, this was only a pilot and everything, but I have to say it was hard to take serious. I kept wanting to somehow spoof it, but I could not spoof it. You realize you do have to just play it straight, and even though maybe all you're saying is 11, you have to say it sincerely and all like that. So, yes. Well, maybe if your spoof of a game show hostess was actually used for the show, Yahtzee would have fared better because the show only lasted eight months. Yeah, exactly. It was a short-lived situation. Oh, it's funny. Before we get to playing the game, I want to ask you, what do you think of the new version of Pyramid hosted by Michael Strahan? It's absolutely great. It's great. I love that it's there, and I think he's terrific. And like I said, it's the best constructed game there is. And I think this version that's currently on is wonderful. I think some of the other ones since Dick Clark were not as good, I'm sorry to say, but this one is fantastic. You know what I love about it is the set is very similar to the original one. And I actually had John on the show, John Ritchie Jr., to talk about yeah. retro game show revivals. And since he's a producer on the show, we talked about bringing back Pyramid, because Pyramid's been done quite a few times. You had the Donny Osmond version. From NBC's Happy Family, it's Jeff Davis and Melody Paxson. Today... Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad you joined us because you were going to have a great time, and so are we. You also had the 2012 version on GSN called The Pyramid, hosted by Price is Right and Let's Make a Deal executive producer Mike Richards. Today's special guests are from the CBS show Rules of Engagement, Megan Price. And from Fox's new girl, Lamorne Morris. And now here's your host, Mike Richards. Thank you, everyone, and welcome to the Pyramid. Today, two contestants will compete for a chance to win up to $50,000. And then after Dick Clark, there was a short-lived version with John Davidson, who was also a host on Hollywood Squares before that. If someone gets to the top of this pyramid in less than 40 seconds, they could go on to win $100,000. From Television City in Hollywood, this is the $100,000 Pyramid. Today, our special guests are from L.A. Law, Cantata Farrell and Clifton Davis. 
And now, here is your host, John Davidson. But we talked about how the set, they wanted to keep it classic, but with a modern flair. So, you know, you have the screens and you have not just some plywood. So it's great to see the set look similar to the original one, but still have a modern flair. And the game itself is pretty much the same, which is great. Yeah, that's why I think this version, in my opinion, is really wonderful because you've got to update the look of it and everything. But, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And this time out, they're being much more true to it. And that's why I think it's a terrific version of it. I think this version is where it's at. It's great. Right. The game's the same. The only thing that's changed is you can win a little bit more money. You should do that. It's right. Now, would you like to be a guest on the show? Because one thing I've always said is, why don't they bring back some of the original Pyramid players to play again now? I think that would be so cool. Yes, it would be wonderful. But also, you know, things have their time. So you kind of go, you know what? It's someone else's turn now. So, you know, it's all a good thing. Believe me, it's all a good thing. Don't worry, though. I'm going to keep wishing that people like you and all the other greats are going to be on that show one day. (laughs) That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Maybe they'll have a retro thing on the Game Show Network, whatever. But you have to teach me your new version that you've created. I was just about to lead into the game myself, but thank you, Teresa, for that wonderful segue. It's time for the Game of the Day. Game of the Day. You and I are already in sync. We're like, hey, this is feeling just about the time we move to the next thing. We're a good match. Well, I think we're a great match as well. And since we have this great connection, I'm really excited because for today's game of the day, we're going to be partners as we play the Winner's Circle. The Winner's Circle. So here's how this works. I reached out to our mutual friend, John Ritchie Jr., and I said to him, I'm going to have Teresa Gansell on the show, and I want to play Pyramid with her. However, I want to be like every contestant and every celebrity guest. I don't want to know what the topics are until we actually play the game. Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. So he created for me four winner's circle rounds. I love it. Oh, I love John. He's the best. Okay, great. So how this is going to work, so I'm going to be giving the clues. Now, I have no idea what these categories are. I have not even opened up the document until right now. I love that it was hermetically sealed. That's right. And I won't be able to see the next game until we get to it, or even the next category until you get the previous one correct. Wow, wow. Boy, this is top secret. You know it. When I play a game, I need it to be legit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's right. Otherwise, it could be a game show scandal. It will be, yes, absolutely. I don't want to take us back to the 50s and the scandal. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So here's how this works. We're going to play four rounds. And just like on the show, I'll be giving the clues. And even though this is radio, I still won't use my hands because, you know, that's in the rules. You can't use your hands. <laughs> So there are six categories in each round, and the categories increase in difficulty, and the point value increases along the way as well. So you go from 50 points to 300 points in 50-point increments. And the 50 to 300 numbers just happen to be the same dollar totals that each category was worth on the pyramid in the 80s version of the show. However, if we can get to the top of the pyramid in 60 seconds or less, the round is worth 2,000 points. And as you know, I have to give a list of items that fit the category. And if I get too descriptive or give an illegal clue, we give up the chance to win the 2,000 points. Now, Teresa, for us to win the game, we have to accumulate 4,000 points or more within the four winner circle rounds. Okay. Wowee. All right. This is so exciting. I get to play Pyramid with Teresa Ganzel. This is a dream come true. Oh, the pressure, the pressure. Oh, I so wish I could see your face, but (laughs) we're going to have to do this all vocally. We have to communicate so much. Well, it's interesting because on 100,000 on Pyramid years ago, they would have a special week featuring blind contestants. Brad fact. And so it was very interesting watching them because you can't use your hands, but through eyes or through just being able to see your partner, you can get a clue to be delivered, you know, through body language. Yes, I use my face a lot. Yes. Right. And Dick would always say, you know, zone in on her eyes. She gives great clues with her eyes. And it was so interesting watching the contestants who are blind play because they don't have that advantage. They really have to rely just on voice. And this is the same thing what we're doing here. And I have to confess, I didn't even know about when they did it with the blind. I didn't even know about that. See, you teach me something and I'll teach you something. Thank you very much. Yes. 
There's some right. clips on YouTube of it, too. Do you ever watch yourself on Pyramid go on YouTube and watch yourself play? Yes. I don't really usually seek it out, but people sometimes post them on Facebook. And when they come up for me on Facebook, then I watch them, and I really enjoy it. Well, hopefully all that watching will pay off here. Are you ready to play? I'm ready to play. Then let's play the winner circle. So we're starting with winner circle round one. 60 seconds on the clock. I'm about to look at the first category. Again, I have no idea what the categories will be. Here is my first subject. Go. The clock. Eggs. The clock. Eggs. Things with a timer. Eggs. Things with a shell. The clock. Things. The clock and eggs. A game show's clock. Game show's clock. Oh, my God. This is horrible. Uh, uh, Game show's. We'll pass. We'll pass. Uh, Things you break. Things you scramble. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. Do your homework, please, or, or you'll get detention. What your teacher would say. Correct. Kermit the Frog, grass. Green. Correct. Milk. Your booty. Shake, things you shake. Yes. Um, uh, a, a, a rubber band. Uh, a contortionist. Things you bend. Uh, a contortionist. Things that bend. Ooh, time's up. Oh. The first one was things you beat. You beat the clock and you beat eggs. Oh, damn. And the last one. I think you could beat the drum. Oh, that was a good clue. Beat Beat the drum. Yes. Yes. A Uh, battered wife. Oh, that's terrible. Um, (laughs) And the category with the rubber band and the contortionist, that was flexible things. Oh, okay. But let's see how many. We lost so much time on the first one. Damn. Well, you know what? We were getting warmed up. Right. We got plenty of time. Oh, yeah. So let's see, we got in that round 100, 150, so we have 450 points. And that means our overall total starts at 450. All right, here we go. You Very ready? Good. This is game yes, two, 60 seconds on the clock. Here's my first subject. Go. Budweiser, Heineken. Beer. Correct. I'm the current host of The Tonight Show. Jimmy Fallon. Correct. Your child, your Valentine. Things you love. Yes. An angry bear. Things that growl. Yes. Um, I'm going to pass. Old coupons. Things you clip. Old coupons. Things you save. You uh, save. Uh, old coupons. Uh, uh, Things that expire. Yes. Uh, your clothes. Uh... A pimple. Things you wash. The, a mole. Things you press. A mole. Things you. A wart. Uh, things you. Uh, a wart. Your clothing. Uh, oh, this is a tough one. Oh, oh. Time's up. Dang it. Oh, Ooh, what that, was it? Things you remove. Yes, that's hard. Things you remove. That's hard. Things you remove. I can't think of anything else. A wart. Let uh, me think. You remove? That's hard. I'm thinking now that I know what I'm going, what would I have said? Yeah. Remove? That was going to haunt me. Yeah. Because we were fast at the rest of the yeah. pyramid. You were great with getting expire. Fast. Yeah, that was the top of the pyramid, and we got that fast. You know what's going to happen when we're done with the game and done with our conversation? We're going to think of the perfect clue for things you remove. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always happens. Yeah. All right, so let's see. We got 50, 150, 300, 500, 800 points. Not bad. All right. Okay. We got two games to go. Holy cow, the pressure's mounting. So we have 1,250 points. So that means we need to get at least one of these two to the top plus 750. Yes, you're right. Okay, very good. I'm glad you're keeping track of all this. See, once again, the game show host skills are very clear. Well, I love to practice my hosting skills with my guests right here on the game show, so I'm glad you've noticed. Yeah, you're fantastic. Okay, great. All right, here we go. 60 seconds on the clock. This is game three. Again, we need 4,000 points to win, and so far we have 1,250. Okay. Here's my first subject. Go. Oklahoma, South Pacific, Rent. uh, Oh, musicals. Broadway musicals. 
I'm going to take care of you in your house. I wear a tuxedo. What uh, your butler would say. Yes. Sleep. Uh, uh. Snore. What you do in bed. Yes. Flowers. The beach. Bikinis. Uh, things in Hawaii. Uh, 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 fl- uh, flowers. June, July. Uh, things in the summer. Yes. In the spring. Yes. Uh, um, wave your hand. Uh, uh. Uh, wave your hand. What do you do in a parade? No, uh, what do you do on a float? Pass. We'll pass. Uh, a relationship. An, a relationship. Uh, 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 Things uh, that are broken. Uh, Things that you work on. Oh, oh. Time's up. Oh. Okay, wait. Go back to the waving hand one. Wave your hand. Kissing. Hugging. Signs of affection. Um, waving your hand. Kissing. Hugging. hugging. Things you do to say hello, goodbye. Yes, goodbye, um, goodbye. That was it. Goodbye. Okay, very good. Goodbye. The last category with the relationships, that was things that are steady, but I didn't have too much time for that one. Geez, it felt like we had more time. I know. I feel like the timer went awry. That's what it feels like <laughs> on the game, too, right? Yes, that was crazy. All right, so we have 1,750. Unfortunately, that means we can't reach the winning goal of 4,000 points. Oh. I think we should play the last game anyway. I think we should. Why don't we make the goal 3,000? How about that? (laughs) I love that. So that if we get to the top on this one, we win. I love that. Okay. Okay, good. So we have to get to the top, though. I know. Okay, I'm going to try my darned hardest. Well, I am too. So if we get to the top on this one, we win, all right? Okay, deal. 60 seconds on the clock. Yes. Here's the first subject. Go. Happy days, all in the family. Norman Lear shows. Uh, uh, Modern Family. I mean, uh, a sitcom. Yes. Joe Biden. Vice I'll, President. Yes. Uh, I hosted The Pyramid. I hosted Blooper. Dick Clark. Yes. Because you're sad. Why you cry? Yes. Uh, a contortionist. Things that are flexible did best. Yes. The President's Book. Things that are signed uh, that you uh, swear in. Uh, um, um, a, a key. Uh, uh, messages. Things that are gold. Uh, Things that are gold. Invisible messages. Things invisible that you can't see, that you can't read. The, uh, invisible messages. The president's Is book. The president's book. Things that are bestsellers. Oh. That are golden, that you can't turn. That you turn, that you can't see, that are invisible messages that you don't read. You can stop guessing now. Time is up. It was things that are secret. Apparently, the president has this secret book that nobody else knows where he keeps it, and nobody else knows what the book contains. I don't know if you've heard of that. I've never heard of the president's secret book. Well, maybe the only reason I know it is because I watch National Treasure too much. Because the second National Treasure movie is called Book of Secrets, and the whole movie centers around this secret book that only the president of the United States knows about. And it contains secret files and messages that have been passed down from president to president. And even though the movie's fictitious, there supposedly is a real book of secrets that our presidents have used. Let me tell you what. All I know is that I want you to host a game show, and I want to be on it, because this is pretty hilarious. I really appreciate that. Forget the win. That's all that matters, that you told me that you want to be on my game show. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. And I'm so glad that no money was involved, because this way, we don't really have to feel bad about this. And I'm learning about the president's secret book. That's right. That's my win for the day. <laughs> well, Teresa, if that's your win for the day, I want to play for you the winning sound effect I would have played if we would have made it to the top of the pyramid. So for your win, here is the winning sound effect. I remember though on Ellen once there was this little oh. kid who's like a presidential expert and Obama was Oh, I on. love that little kid. Yes, I love her. Yes. Yeah. And Obama was on the show so she asked him 
does the president really have a secret book? And Obama said, well, that's a secret. So you you have questions for the president? Yeah. This is a big moment. You can, whatever you want to ask. What's your first okay. question? Go so, ahead. is there really a book of secrets? That's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well, all right. Now, listen, you're getting your knowledge about this secret book from a little girl on the Ellen Show. That's true. <laughs> This is how I get my knowledge, from Little Girls on the Ellen Show and from Nicolas Cage movies. <laughs> <laughs> that little girl really is knowledgeable. She wouldn't have brought that up to President Obama unless there are articles about this so-called secret book. That's right. Now, so you know what's funny about this? This is what fascinates me about the game of Pyramid. When someone sees a category, sometimes these random things will jump into their head that maybe not everyone is familiar with. And it's just interesting that that's the first clue that some people go to. And in this case, it was things that are secret. And I said, the president's book. Yes. That's what's great about Pyramid. You never know what the topic's going to be and what the clue is going to be. And this is why the humor is real. Because, like you said, it's those random things that people say, even when they're trying their hardest to win a game. That's right. And it's funny because there was this one instance on the $25,000 pyramid where the topic was things you blend and LeVar Burden was the celebrity giving the clues and he said a smoothie for things you blend. Now, if you know what a smoothie is, that's the perfect clue for things you blend and that might be the first thing that you answer with. But the contestant had no idea what a smoothie was and Dick Clark didn't know what a smoothie was either. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Dick Clark was clueless. The contestant was clueless. They didn't know what a smoothie was. So this is another instance where the clue giver might know something and they think, oh, that's the perfect clue. And then they're like, huh? Yes, absolutely. That's what's tricky about this game, but still oh so fun. I remember one time, this made me laugh, a contestant said to me, somehow it was even funnier because she had this great southern twang to her voice, and she said, all right, all right, if I was a prostitute... I would have a bad one. And she said it again. I probably would have a bad one. So I said, a rash. <laughs> it was wrong. She tried to get me to say reputation. Oh, reputation. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, she did give a decent clue. <laughs> She's right. Absolutely. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> so we got to 2,500 points. Unfortunately, that means we did not win. Oh. However, I think John did a wonderful job creating these winner's circle rounds. So audience, give it up for John Ritchie Jr. and his pyramid game making skills. Listen, who's better than him? I mean, my God, he really is brilliant. Yes, he certainly is. And that was the game of the day, the winner's circle. The winner's circle. Well, even though we didn't win, I certainly had fun. And I usually don't say this because I'm always a competitive person, but sometimes having fun is all that matters. Right, Teresa? That's right. Absolutely. Bradley, you're just wonderful. I so enjoyed this today. This was so much fun. Well, this was a dream come true, being able to talk to you about Pyramid and play Pyramid with you as well. It's been such a treat. I hope someday I can meet you face to face. I really do. That would be wonderful. I hope so, too. And then we'll try it again with Pyramid. (laughs) Okay, you got it. That's a promise. And you are, Thank you so much for this. You're welcome, and you're always welcome back on the game show to talk about more Pyramid, other game shows, or if you just want to play Pyramid again. Okay, I will remember that. I got your information, so you may be hearing from me again. Perfect. Well, Teresa, it's been an absolute pleasure, so thank you so much for joining me right here on the game show today. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll talk again. Okay, Bradley? Absolutely. Okay, have a great day. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go. Another episode of The Game Show is in the books. And I want to once again thank Pyramid Pro Teresa Ganzel for being my guest today to talk about the 45th anniversary of Pyramid and for being my Winner's Circle partner. In addition, thank you to Game Show producer John Ritchie Jr. for making all of the Winner's Circle rounds that Teresa and I played. I must say, those are some good categories, John, but I wouldn't expect anything less from you. Now, if this classic game show anniversary episode is making you want to listen to my other classic game show anniversary episodes, all you have to do is log on to www.soundcloud.com slash Bradley underscore Clark, that's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y underscore C-L-A-R-K-E slash sets slash the game show. That's www.soundcloud.com slash Bradley underscore Clark, that's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y underscore C-L-A-R-K-E slash sets 
slash The Game Show. Also, you can like The Game Show starring Bradley Clark on Facebook and follow The Game Show starring Bradley Clark on Twitter using the handle at The Game Show BC and hashtag The Game Show. And of course, be sure to tune in next time for another exciting episode of the talk show all about the world of television game and competition shows, The Game Show. For now, Bradley Clark, so long. This edition of The Game Show was created and produced by Bradley Clark and was recorded at the WRHU Studios. This is Austin Angelo speaking. The Game Show is a Bradley Clark production. Get your game on.